this is an improvised video, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Proto Mario, your host, and you may have been hearing some interesting things coming from Mr. Phil Fish. Yes, the creator of Fez, and one of the starring leads of the indie game movie. Uh, he apparently had a little bit of an issue and a blow up on Twitter, if you will. Apparently, there are several things that occurred, and a lot of people have been covering this, uh, from Review Tech USA to Alpha Omega Sin. Uh, you know, there's just a lot of issues going on with Mr. Phil Fish. So, let me go ahead and give you my take. Apparently, he said he was going to take the money and run. He's tired of getting into arguments with people on uh, Twitter over what he does. So, I can empathize with him on the fact that, you know, you get tired of arguing with morons over the internet. However, I can't empathize with the fact that you're going to steal a bunch of money that was given to you in the, you know, thought that you were going to develop a game, and then you're just going to take that and say no game. This is technically legal to do because, again, kickstart fundings allow you to take the money if you don't attain your goal and you technically don't have to give the product. Uh, there's a lot of loopholes and issues there, so either way you slice it, I do hope he does get brought up on charges for fraud. Mr. Phil Fish also had several things to say about Let's Players using his product and other products. He stated that pretty much anyone who posts an LP of a product should be copyrighted and should have to give a portion of their earnings to the developer. And while I partially agree that many developers do deserve recognition, I do not agree at all that if somebody makes an LP of a game that they are to owe the developer anything. I've had my own copyright incidents in the past, but the only company major-wise that have ever copyrighted me for anything is Konami, and that was for a news story. It was a very weird situation, so I ended up just deleting the news story and, well, I didn't get into any trouble, so I guess no harm, no foul, right? But the point is that he states that every person who does an LP of any game should instantly give him money because they're LPing his game. Okay, so this was brought up by Review Tech USA, a credit do where credits earn. He said, you know, you have to buy the game, and if you don't have the game, then you can't freaking, you know, play the game. So, how are you going to get that credit if the person doesn't buy the game? Of course, there's piracy and things like that out there. However, I have to contest with Phil Fish on this also, and I have to disagree with Rich of Review Tech USA. While I agree on the merits of just uploading straight up footage, I do feel that the person who is recording that footage has to first record it, play the game, download the game, get all the updates out of the way, create a save file, play through the game effectively, uh, compress it, have something to record it with, have a computer that is able to process, edit, and compress it, have the program, there's a lot that goes into just making straight footage also. So it's not so much as if the dev themselves just handed someone all of this stuff and said, well, you know what? Here you go. Uh, and you're going to give us all the money that you earn from making this. No, man. You know, you have to go out and get an HD PBR2, an Elgato capture card, Black Magic capture card, whatever you're going to record with. And then you have to use all of your tools, your knowledge, and you have to play the game relatively decent to get anyone to view it if you're not going to put any commentary on it. Believe me. Believe me. I have done Spelunky runs where I have done amazing. I beat Omek, I got to hell, and you know what? They don't get as many views as the ones where I'm doing a commentary. People want live reactions, people want talks, things like that. So it's not even in their favor to just record the straight gameplay, because if you're an entertaining host, you'll definitely get more views. I use the simple system of if you can remove what you added to the item and the product stands alone, then that's pretty much copyright infringement. 
Okay, so if you basically put on a game, say you made the game, and that you remove your voice and everything out of that situation, is it still the developer's work? Probably, yes, but, you know, you playing the game, and you moving around and doing different things within the game, your mistakes, your successes, if you were to, oh, I don't know, remove those, would it be the same product? Would a video about hijacking a jet midair in Battlefield 4 be the same if you remove the hijacking of the jet and you just had straight up footage of a jet flying around and a character standing there? Would that be the same? No, obviously not. So what you do and what you play in the game is basically what is yours. No one out there, I don't think, ever sits here and claims the game to be theirs. I mean, come on, guys. How many times have you uploaded footage of the game and said, Yeah, yeah, no, Pokemon, I made Pokemon. That's my game. I made Pokemon, guys. Yeah, yeah, okay. Pokemon was made by four people, and the very most famous people as well. Obviously, people know Game Freak made the game, so you don't have to sit here and act like... You know, people who are LP in games are claiming that that's their game. Obviously, it's not. So the whole copyright thing really needs rewritten because it's just utter nonsense how it's going about and what's happening with it. And it's a real shame because, honestly, there's a lot of game makers and producers out there who really deserve the recognition and allow their games to get out. You know, Blizzard, Rockstar... They basically said, record anything you want and post it. They don't care. And they're smart. Their games are all over the place. But then, Nintendo, with its affiliate program releasing, they're losing out on a lot of ad recognition, um, you know, being able to see the game and say, you know what, that, that seems like a really fun game, I want to play it too. You're kind of rolling the dice when you record a Nintendo game and put up the footage because you never know when they're going to come knocking and wanting that money. So, with Phil Fish, there's a couple other things. He got into several Twitter arguments with people over this stuff, and eventually he just gave up and said he's going to take the money and run as I stated before. Firstly, I want to address this. If you're giving up on an argument and you're not conceding saying that you're right or they're right or um, they're wrong and you you continue to talk about it, uh, you're a coward. If you just run away, you're a coward. There's nothing more to it. I can't describe that situation any better. That's, that's a coward. And if you're taking other people's money that was intended for you to develop a video game, then you're a thief too. So Mr. Phil Fish if nothing else, is a coward and a thief. But secondly, he has a problem handling social situations. When I watched the movie, uh, Indie Game, the movie, I think that's what it call it's called, don't quote me. It's on Netflix if you guys want to see it, and there was a Steam summer sale, or a Steam sale event, where it had it packaged in with Fez, Super Meat Boy, and Braid. Now, the game maker Braid, he was a little bit out there, and he had made several games before, but he did a very good job with it, and he was very nice. He was a very, um, fairly normal individual to speak to. The maker of Super Meat Boy was definitely like your everyday kind of gamer guy, who was very much a family-oriented person. He had a wife, and his uh, buddy was a little bit antisocial. He had a little bit of issues, too, and you can see that when you see these movies. I'm not being judgmental, it just feels that way to me personally, just an opinion. But Phil Fish, man. So when he was developing Fez, he had a problem with his partner and they eventually ended up having to settle with court and papers and stuff like that. And when he showed his game at E3, he had a horrible time, you know, it kept resetting and stuff like that, it was busted. And then his game eventually took him uh, like three years to release, which was really, really bad. Um, a lot of people just said it was really, really bad how long it took them to make it, and they've been very critical on him. And I understand that they can get to you, but man, that guy just seemed very arrogant, very uh, self-upping. He was just not a man that I would want anything to do with personally. And at first, when I watched the movie, 
I thought to myself, well, maybe I'm just being judgmental and critical. But no, it's true. He's horrible. That is horrible to do. That's uh, worse than the Action 52 uh, Cheetah Man fiasco that was going on. That's worse than any other company that has done anything before. That's worse than Capcom canceling Mega Man 3 Legends. Because, my God, at least that one wasn't Kickstart funded. So, guys, leave your comments in the section below. And let me know how this audio sounds. I'm recording this with a new Blue Yeti Black Edition mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing extra with the black. It just looks really pretty. But other than that, guys, it's a new mic and a new show. Well, more of the new and some of the old. Mix it together and you got me. I've been your host, ProDamari, and I'm signing out. Please leave your comments below as to what you think about the Phil Fish fiasco, his blow-ups and stuff like this, that, and the other, and if you even care about Fez or not. If you're curious about it, you can check it out, but I personally wouldn't give him a dime anymore. Try and get it for free if you can. Not advocating piracy, but just don't pay for it. Thanks for watching, and once again, happy gaming. And now comes the all-important decision of supporting the Maverick Army. Join the Maverick Rebellion today. Subscribe and become a Maverick. We are a tight-knit community who desire to change the gaming stereotype into something better. Together, we will revolutionize the world of gaming and the way gaming is viewed on YouTube and across all platforms. Mavericks unite. Subscribe today and become a Maverick with us. I'm Proto Mario, and I approve this message. Please note that in all my videos, if I use images from Google, that I do not own any of those images, and all images attained from Google are owned by their respective owners and copyrights.